Farina and say, Yo! <laughs> Got a job for you. Barging in and like, yo, we got a job for you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's all right. So this is her house. Uh, did Catherine really give us the right address? He lives here. Not that there's anything wrong with this place. It's just uh, a bit of a step down from the Palais Marmonia. Well, she wants to be like a regular human, so. No. It's common courtesy to make sure the homeowner isn't an earshot when you're denigrating their abode. Hey, we didn't know! <laughs> okay, when did popping out of thin air become all the rage? First Catherine and now you? I was just out on a shopping trip. I ran out of macaroni, so I went to grab a few more bags. I used to have a much wider range of choices when it came to food. But now, I'm finding that simple, traditional home cooking can be quite delicious, too. Ooh, the macaroni and cheese! <laughs> Not at all. As long as you have different kinds of sauces in, you can have macaroni and tomato sauce one week, macaroni and bolognese the next. Bolognese? Oh, I guess that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> it looks like bologna. I don't know. <laughs> bologna is also spelled weird. Really, Paiwan? You just said that she's on copium? Is it because you have to do your own cooking now? How rude! Questioning my cooking skills. The audacity! Hey, 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 calm down. It's not like I have a very eventful life these days. Actually, I barely leave the house. So I don't see how it's unusual that my meals are a little simpler now, too. Besides, I'm sure I could master dishes like La Lettre Fossilor or Blubber Profiteroles in no time, if I felt so inclined. Ah, there it is. You don't know how to cook. <laughs> Not yet, maybe, but... Anyway, what are you even doing here? Hey, I wish she has... You didn't come here just to ogle at my fall from grace. Hey, at least she has a significant dish. Unless, like, the right and show them. <laughs> Let me first be clear that I'm not taking guests at this time. So, if you're just here to clown around, then please be on your way. Shoot! No. Sorry! We're sorry! Please don't be mad! Yeah, Paimon started it. Yeah. I just said you started it. And not okay. That's not important. Can I help? Uh, well, maybe you're forgetting that I'm no longer the mighty Hydro Archon. I don't even have a vision, you know. Neither do I, but I still can wield that power shit. You're the only person for the job. Oh? Well, if that's the case, then... Fine. I'll spare you the lecture about your attitude just now. Like I said, it was my mom's fault. So tell me, what specifically makes this matter so... specific? So there's this theatrical trope. I, I knew you couldn't have come all this way just to amuse yourselves at my expense. After all, I was once the brightest star in all of Fontaine, well-versed in all the various performing arts. A mere musical is well within my capabilities. <laughs> but given the present circumstances, I'm afraid I must regretfully decline your casting request. Why? How come? It sounds like this would be a breeze for you. True. But I have made a decision to retire from the stage. Although I am no longer required to play the role of the Hydro Archon, the time I spent inhabiting that character has left an indelible mark on me. Oh, yeah, I guess. Centuries of pretending to be a different person changes you completely. True. I'm not the same person I once was. Of course, that can't be undone now. 
It's too late, and I have no intention of reinventing myself all over again. But at least I can say that I no longer desire to play any new roles. So that's how you feel. Yeah, Paimon can understand, but this is just a one-off part to fill in for someone who's sick. Surely that's okay. Whether it's a one-off or not, it's a boundary that I've committed to no longer cross. If I make an exception to the rule now, I'm just leaving a back door for myself. Which would be the same as not having a boundary in the first place. So I'm not going to perform, and that is that. Okay, guess there's no convincing you. Well, is there anything else we can do to help out the troop? Otherwise, they'll just have to disband without any fanfare. Do you know any other actors who might be interested in the role? Nope. Well. Short and to the point, okay. I've never been great at maintaining relationships. Besides, anyone I've ever worked with probably couldn't wait to get rid of me. Don't say that. Since I'm just an ordinary person now, they'll probably just laugh in my face if I go asking them for help. No, don't. Don't say those kind of things, okay? Look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry I drew a line in the sand without thinking about every possible grain on the other side. Well, is there anything else we can do? This performance really means a lot to the guy we're working for. <sighs> Have I not made myself clear? You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't want this job, nor do I know of anyone else who would. Okay, okay, we're just saying if we need help. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean for that to sound so harsh. I wish I could help, really. But if I thought I had the answer to this problem, I would have said so by now. Okay. It's all right, Farina. Paimon just wanted to make sure we tried everything. Oh, everyone in the troop will be so disappointed. Well, let's come up with a plan B. Yeah, I guess that's all we can do now. All right, then. We'll see you around. Uh, toodaloo to you, too. I'm going home to take a rest now. Yeah, I wouldn't be that easy, but... It's too bad, but we have to respect Farina's decision. Maybe the thought of performing brings up too many painful memories now. Well, yes, that too, but, you know. Oh, there's another person there. Huh? What's going on? Are they arguing? Um. Uh, That's besides the point. I'll ask you again. Why did you start looking for a replacement without my consent? When did I tell you I'm going to take a step back? You didn't need to say it. We've known each other for how long now? We know the signs. But you never tell us about your illness, even when it's clearly flaring up. And that gives you the right to make a decision on my behalf? Shortly after you left, the troop's lead actress came to the Adventurer's Guild. She believes that she's healthy enough to perform. Excuse me, but can you both take a moment to discuss something else for now? The adventurer assigned to your commission has returned. Sorry, I was just dealing with a little misunderstanding. So, how did your conversation with Farina go? Sadly, it's a no from her. We tried to persuade her, but she wasn't having it. She doesn't want to play the role, for personal reasons. I see. Well, circumstances have changed a little, so maybe that's not such bad news after all. You see... Our leading lady has just informed me that she's well enough to make it to the show after all. Staging the musical with the full original cast was always the dream, of course. Oh, right! Sounds like everything works itself out then. Oh, she's right over there. <laughs> and that thing is... We had to convince her to join. Only for her to find out that she's no longer needed. Yeah, she'd be livid. We'd get the scolding of a lifetime. Jeez, 
Is Lady Farina really so harsh with people? Only joking, calm down. So, uh, guess we can consider this case closed now, huh? Despite the fact that we failed to complete the commission, we are still racking our brains for ideas on the way back here. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Look, there's no point arguing with you about this anymore. You've made yourself very clear, so I'll stop looking for a replacement. This is the last chance we have, though. If your illness flares up again, there won't be time to find anyone to replace you. So, are you absolutely sure you'll be able to handle it? The whole team is putting everything they have into this final performance. We have to make sure it goes ahead. Yes, I'm completely confident. I've been taking a new medication from the doctor, and it's working brilliantly. I'll definitely be able to tough it out until the performance day. I share everyone's desire to commemorate all our years as a troupe with a proper farewell show. So, the last thing I want is to be left out. Every one of us thinks of this troupe as their home, myself included. You're right. I'm sorry. I let myself get too worried about the show. I should have asked for your permission first. <laughs> oh, well then, well. Sounds like the show will go on! Wait a second. Uh, Yo, what's up? Uh, hey, how did you... Uh, I, I was just passing by because I realized I forgot a couple of items on my shopping list. <laughs> but why are you here in the Avengers Guild? <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright, I'm done, I'm done. No need to drag me. Uh, uh ahem. Hello, one and all. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation just now. Farina? Didn't you say you were gonna take a rest at home? What are you doing here? I... I was just ever so slightly concerned about the situation you mentioned. Yes, a teensy bit concerned, that's all. When you came to talk with me earlier, I jumped right to explaining my position and said some strongly worded things. Mm -hmm. And all before I even had a full grasp of the situation. Anyway, I just feel a bit bad about how it went down. I'm sorry, Paimon. Oh, oh it's totally fine. Paimon didn't take any of that personally. Then why didn't you just show yourself? You really have a knack for asking the most uncomfortable questions, don't you? Oh, wow. <laughs> I felt very sheepish. Having had a change of heart after flatly refusing you. And then, to make matters worse, you caught me. But in any case, it sounds like the issue has already been resolved. Yeah. When they said they were going to ask for your help, I almost had a heart attack. I mean, how could we be worthy of having Lady Farina star in our show? There is no need to think like that. And no need to keep addressing me as Lady. Just Farina is fine. I was wondering, if this troop is so important to all of you, why does it have to disband? If the difficulties are purely financial, then there must be a solution. You could put the shows on pause while you look for a sponsor, for instance. Everyone seems so devoted to the troop. I'm sure if you keep chipping away, you'll find a way through. <sighs> we all want to believe that, but... Some things are just beyond our control. Everything's been going downhill ever since we lost our director. She was the heart and soul of our troop. She kept us going. Her name was O'Reilly, and she was the founder as well as the artistic director of our troop. And tragically, she was a victim in the serial disappearances case. Oh. What? That's actually how I recognize these two. It was all thanks to their efforts that the true culprit was brought to justice. <sighs> but still, no sentence can bring our director back to us. She was a loyal fan of your performances, Lady, uh, Miss Farina. They were what first inspired her to get into musical theater. She rallied many people around her who were destitute or had lost their sense of purpose in life and convinced them to join her troupe. She wrote her own scripts, acted on stage, and mentored each and every one of us. People loved our performances back then. We seemed to be going from strength to strength. 
things were really looking up for us. And then disaster struck. Yeah. After that, the entire troop fell into disarray. None of us know anything about script writing, let alone how to handle the business side of things. We've been doing the best we can. But despite our efforts, things are slowly but surely falling apart. It's agonizing. But ultimately, we'd rather end things now on our own terms than stick it out to the bitter end and watch all our dreams turn to dust. Oh. Oh. What a terrible waste. A gifted artist from humble beginnings who achieved so much and no doubt had much more to give. And then her life was so cruelly taken. I suppose it's fair to say then that this final show, besides being your farewell to the stage, is also your final gift for her? Yes, exactly. We all miss her terribly. Well, good thing I followed the traveler here. After hearing this tragic tale, I can no longer stand by and do nothing. Uh, Karina? I know what you're thinking, but I by no means plan to cross the boundary I've set for myself. Besides, they're no longer looking for a replacement anyway. I can, however, provide some artistic guidance from the vantage point of a highly experienced audience member. But only if you feel this is something that would help, of course. Oh, most definitely! We'll take any guidance that you can give. We unfortunately don't have any budget for a consultant, though. Will that be a problem? I don't need any compensation. All I'd ask in return, if you're willing, is that you tell me some more about the life and work of your late director. Something I've begun to realize since my departure from the opera Epicles is that there's a lot you don't see when you observe everything from on high. The law only judges criminal behavior and does not weigh human emotion. The court's verdict can settle the question of criminal liability, but... What about all the unresolved emotions of the parties involved? What happens to them? Well, the verdict can be very emotional. But they come out pouring out and flowing away into infinity beyond. An interesting answer. But if you ask me, I think all emotion shall ultimately return home to the heart and slowly settle with the passage of time. Take, for example, how this troop pines for their late director. Things such as this I have never witnessed before. And so I should like to observe, perchance to understand. Ah, so a fan of your old dramatic monologues then, huh? You just want to get back in on the action, don't you? No, no, no. This is a completely different situation. Huh. Pearls before swine. <laughs> Would you be willing to join me? Come on, take a break from adventuring to listen to a story. Sure, I'll do it for you. Thank you all so much. Our director was a huge fan of Miss Farina's performances, as of course we all are. All right, follow me. We'll go to our usual practice space. Please excuse the size. It's a little on the smaller side. He's finally come to meet up with Nuria. How about we don't right now? <laughs> Not right now, Paimo. We got other things to do. That can wait. For another day. Like, full-on day. We're not talking about Genshin days. We're talking about Earth days. Oh, hello. Huh? Lady Farina? What's Lady Farina doing here? Hello all, allow me to explain. As of today, Lady, uh, 
Miss Farina will be supporting our production of the Little Oceanid in the role of artistic consultant. These two over here are the ones that made it possible. They kindly reached out to Miss Farina on our behalf. I'm sure they need no introduction. You bet! That was the trial of the century! You helped bring our director's murderer to justice. We can't thank you enough. Oh, please don't mention it. We're just here to join in on the fun. So, you were saying... The Little Oceanid? Yeah, that's the name of our final show. It's an unfinished script left behind by our director. One of our greatest regrets is that she never got to complete it. So, if we can bring it to the stage and make it a successful show, we can all take some solace in that. Wait, but if it's not finished, then... Finding an actress was the least of your problem. Yeah, we've been battling issues on every front trying to realize this dream. Anyway, let me give you a quick summary of what the story's all about. The protagonist of the story is a young Oceanid who transforms herself into human form, despite the protests of her family. She longed to live just like any other human. And sure enough, she found friendship and even love. Everything seemed perfect, but one day, her true identity was exposed, and her world came crashing down around her. So far, so good. A classic tale. What happened after that? That's one of the issues we've been trying to deal with. Unfortunately, this was as far as the director got with her script. We need a proper ending so we can bring this musical to the stage. But people have different opinions on which direction to take it in. We still haven't decided between a happy ending or a true-to-life tragedy. By true-to-life, you mean the director's sudden disappearance? Yeah, like they say, truth is stranger than fiction. But then there's the question of whether we really want to use the stage to pass our raw pain onto the audience. Exactly. A lot of the time, people come to watch a show just hoping for some light entertainment. We have to consider their emotional stake in this, not just our own. And one last thing. We're still waiting on confirmation from two of our main actors. The first is Paulo, who plays the protagonist's lover. He's locked himself away to focus on writing an ending for the script. But the deadline's passed, and we still haven't heard from him. The other is Vilmont, who plays the main antagonist. He took the director's death pretty hard. Hasn't set foot in the city since. He did write to us, promising that he'll be there for the final performance, but we haven't seen or heard from him since. So we're not really sure what to make of that. Huh. Although... Now that we have Miss Farina helping us, maybe we should take the opportunity to get everyone back together. What opportunity? What do you mean? <laughs> maybe you're unaware, but your name has always been like a rallying cry for us. Our director was constantly singing your praises. All of us look up to you as a role model. <laughs> oh, stop. You're making me all flustered. <laughs> Although, <laughs> not in a bad way. Um, I suspect the reason they're dragging their feet is that they have their doubts about whether the show will really go ahead, considering all the issues we've been facing. But one by one, all the obstacles are being removed. Now is the time to rally the troops. Makes sense. Okay, priority number one, let's check in with Paulo and see where he's at with the ending. He went back to Poisson a few days ago said that staying in a friend's home might help him to relax and escape the feeling of isolation. <gasps> no, Poisson! The last thing his friend would want right now would be to take visitors, given that Poisson was flooded not too long ago. But I guess it's the opposite. A friend in need and all that. Yeah, maybe we could use some company. Poisson? Nothing. I suppose my presence will be indispensable if we are to restore his faith in the show. So, allons-y. To Poisson. Poisson. Oh, the Poisson. Just to get the Poisson. <laughs> We're going to Poisson. So, Sparina can get her Poisson. <laughs> Go 
If I remember correctly, this is where he's staying. Who is it? It's me. Is the script ready? You came all the way here for that? Uh, all right. Forget that for now. Just come on out. We've got some great news. Nice try. Look, just give me some time, okay? I'm just wrapping up this last part of the script. I'll be out once I'm... Okay, then. Looking forward to your masterpiece. So, as expected, he's missed the deadline. <sighs> the ending is one of the most important parts of the show. Even once he's done, it isn't final until we've all had the chance to read through and make sure we agree on it. Hmm. Someone told me they'd just seen you in Poisson. I assumed it was a case of mistaken identity, but sure enough, here you are. And oh, Navia! Hello there. Yeah. I was wondering if we might run into her. So, you're here for Paolo? Looks like he could be a while, so feel free to take a stroll around town in the meantime. I've made all the arrangements already. Oh, it's okay. We can just wait here. Uh, thank you for being so considerate, Miss Navia. That sounds wonderful. We'll take that stroll. Get over here, you! How oblivious are you? <laughs> How are things in Poisson now? Any better? Things are on the mend, but it's a slow process. Some people may never recover from the trauma they experienced. I'm sorry to hear that. I wish there was something I could do. Please, must our conversations take such a depressing turn every time we meet? We all have painful memories, but we don't have to let them cloud everything we do. And if you're trying to make a new start, perhaps it's best if you don't bring up the past all the time. Thank you for your words of comfort. You make a very good point. But for now, at least, I think I should stay with the way I'm feeling for a while longer. It's okay. These things take time. Moving on from a painful experience is easier said than done. Which brings me to why I'm here. I thought you should probably know that not everyone here is ready to forgive and forget after the Hydro Archon's inaction in the face of catastrophe. To avoid upsetting the peace, I told the townspeople that everyone here is a member of the theater troupe, and that you are just an actress, playing the role of Farina. It's not a perfect solution, but hopefully it means you won't have to lie low while you're here. That's so She's like, bro. Yeah? Well, what do you expect? I am the courageous and considerate president of Spina di Rosula, after all. Like my father before me. Anyway, that was all. Look after her now. Yep. Thanks. Off we go then. Let's take a look up there. I don't have any friends that I can be frank and honest with. So maybe she's right. You're the closest thing to friends that I have. Oh. so grateful that Miss Nafia was so understanding. To be perfectly honest, I didn't know if I was ready to meet her. 
it's always easiest to just run away from your problems. But that never fixes anything. You can't get around the obstacles without facing them. So that's why you were nervous when they brought up Pasquale. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared of coming back here. Still, I felt it was something I had to do. As I was saying before, I want to see for myself the things that I never could in the past. I'd be overjoyed if the people here could find it in their hearts to forgive me. But they're more likely to unleash a tirade of vitriol against me. Which, of course, I completely understand and accept. And I'm sure some people didn't buy the lie, so that's why they're looking at us. Yeah, I can tell people are watching me. I'm sure some people here see the idea of someone coming to Poisson dressed as the Hydra Archon as extremely disrespectful. I used to be terrified of the gaze of other people, especially when they had suspicion or resentment in their eyes. <sighs> I guess I wasn't quite ready for this after all. I'm not surprised you're making yourself go through all this. I mean, me too. What do you mean by that? You expected me to just keep running and hiding from my responsibility forever. Huh? There seems to be a crowd gathering over there. You're not staying quiet either. Probably time we made a move. How about we check out Spina de Wasula's ship? We should have a view of the whole of Poisson from there. And they're gone, thank god. <laughs> Otherwise, I was gonna beat their asses and be like, Yo! Can't you all just chill out? Oh, I'm in the water. <laughs> yes, uh, everybody that you knew is gone and whatever not, but that's not gonna fix anything if you guys are gonna keep acting like this. It's just not. Probably just wanted a relaxing stroll, and here I am dumping all this heavy stuff on you. Yeah, it's fine. We don't mind. It's actually refreshing to see a different side of you. Great. Well, I appreciate your company, so please don't disappear just yet. I don't know whether you can tell, but... The years of suffering and loneliness aren't the only reason I have a hard time facing up to who I used to be. As I stand here by the ship, I can't get the images of the rising water out of my mind. One after another, people were taken by the water. All those treasured lives and memories washed out of existence in an instant. They thought their god would protect them. They had absolute faith that when disaster struck, a divine power would save them from harm. And all the while, I played my part to perfection to convince them that was true. But then the floodwaters finally came, and the Hydro Archon did nothing. You shouldn't look at it like that. You were only doing your duty. Yeah, don't be harsh on yourself. I've had to go through so many moments like that for the sake of protecting the truth. As time went on, it got harder and harder to bear. And I became more lonely and isolated. 
Eventually, I realized I had nothing left except the truth. I became terrified of completely failing in my task and was haunted by the thought of being left all alone. Fortunately, we were able to avoid the worst case scenario thanks to the help of heroic individuals such as yourselves. Everyone rose to their responsibilities and I finally regained my freedom. But on some level, freedom also means no longer being needed. I have no further use to people. Hmm. Prima would have never imagined you'd see it that way. Well, think of it as a reward. A reward? Yeah, I mean, because now you can finally speak with your heart and not be so alone anymore. I guess so. And back then, I didn't even dare to dream about having someone to confide in. I was scared of someone recognizing me for who I truly was and exposing the secret I swore to protect. Believe in the Farina you see on stage. She is the one you can trust. I had to keep all my feelings, all my curiosity about life to myself. No one could be allowed to know. That's what I really meant when I said I'm no good at maintaining relationships. So that's where you were coming from. Paimon totally thought you were just a bit of a diva at heart. Could you please get off my case? I don't know what's gotten into you today. I'm making an effort here. You could at least try to do the same. I'm not saying shit. She is. Blame Paimon. What Paimon meant to say is that, you, you know, you, she wasn't... Uh, 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 Paimon, shut up. <laughs> but did, did but did you feel better if, once you got that off your chest? I do. I once had nothing but the truth, and now I'm finally free to live my own life again. And even though I have no idea where I'm going right now, at least the choice is in my hands. Alright, it's about time to head back. Polo should have finished the ending by now. Sure, okay, let's head back and check it out. Shut up. Hoping that we do get an ending and then be like, oh yeah, it's not quite done yet. It's like, bro, what are you doing in life? say you needed to watch what you eat? You're supposed to be cutting down on fried foods, not wolfing down copious quantities of fish and chips, you know? <laughs> uh, fish and chips. <laughs> it's not every day we get to dine at Spina di Rosula's expense. Can you believe how generous she is? I'm not about to pass on free food. Anyway, I mean, so. your character doesn't need to be slim and good looking. That's your job. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> it's not your character's health I'm worried about, it's yours. My dude just fat shamed a woman. Okay. I've spent my whole life battling the effects of ill health, and it kills me to watch you willingly ruin yours by filling yourself up with junk all the time. Oh no, looks like they're arguing again. Somewhat. <laughs> Yeah, you're supposed to be slim and whatever, not me. Oh, no, because I'm a guy and you're a woman. Woman's supposed to be slim. Oh, fuck off! Ah, you're back. We've been enjoying Spina di Rosula's VIP treatment in your stead. <laughs> Paulo's nearly done. We shouldn't have to wait too much longer. Well, you should. Great! So you were discussing your characters, right? We heard she's playing the Oceanid who turns into a human girl. What about you? Me? I'm an Oceanid too. He was originally supposed to take the form of a crane, but he <clears throat> outgrew that role. <laughs> well, the costume, at least. So oh. now he's playing the boar instead. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I mean, I kind of laughed on that one too, but yeah. The boar is not a bad character, actually. 
he's the one who raises the little Oceanus, yes? That's right. He has some pretty memorable lines, too. Like when he imparts some solemn words of wisdom to the little Oceanid. If you become human, you can reveal your secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this truly what you want? Wait, that sounds kind of familiar. Oh. It's the most important line in the whole script. I think it's a symbolic statement about our director's life and legacy. She kept quiet about all the trials and tribulations she faced in running our troupe, allowing us to devote ourselves fully to performing. It was only after she was gone that we realized how tough her job really was. You mentioned earlier that the troupe was like your home. Yeah. I was born with an incurable illness. And once my family found out it couldn't be treated, they decided they didn't want me anymore. Oh, that's awful. I spent some years taking whatever work I could find and trying to manage my illness with various medicines. But whenever I had a bad flare-up, I'd be lying in an alleyway for days at a time. It was like that until the director found me one day. She told me I had a great voice and asked if I was interested in studying singing from her. I said yes. She took me under her wing, taught me to both sing and act, helped me find Mora for my meds, took care of me when my condition decided to flare up. <sighs> I know it was all a huge burden on her. She sounds like a really incredible person. She really was. She gave everything she had to her troop and the people in it. All of us were so proud to call her our director. I was a lost child too when she found me. As the child of a murderer, my parents weren't around when I was little, so I got sent to an orphanage. The other kids were always picking fights with me. They'd say things like, Come on, you must be pretty tough if you're the son of a murderer. It was just to taunt me, though. I was an easy target, and they knew it. Oh. One day, I got beaten up so bad that I just couldn't take it anymore. So I ran away. I lost all faith in humanity by that point. I thought the whole world was out to get me. Hmm. Let me guess. Fortunately, the next person you ran into was the director. Yeah. For the first time in my life, I was somewhere I felt safe. And I promised myself I'd stay here until the day the group parted ways. The day you hoped would never come. How times change. Oh, you're finally done? <laughs> Get your butt over here. There's someone I need to introduce you to. This is our new artistic consultant, Miss Farina. Farina? The Farina? Oh my god, how did you manage to wrangle that? We were gonna tell you, but no, you you went on a hissy fit of like, <laughs> Please, <laughs> the honor is all mine. I was profoundly moved to hear about your troop and your wonderful director. I just wanted to do something to help. Same here! Even so, this is just... Oh, wow. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll try to calm down. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, the script, of course. Uh, let me give you a rundown of how the story unfolds in my version of the script. I'm sure you're already familiar with the beginning of the story. The little Oceana decides she wants to become a human against the wishes of her family. She finds love and friendship in the bustling city. But then, disaster strikes. The people start to notice that all the fresh water in the surrounding area is slowly disappearing. The soil is becoming arid. Plants and flowers are withering. And the people begin to panic. The little Oceanid, Cleo, and her lover decide to do something about it and investigate the truth of the matter together. In the end, they discover that all the waste and pollution created by humans over the years has caused the fresh water to flee the land, as if driven by a consciousness of its own. Consciousness? You mean, the water is sentient? Water as a conscious entity. There's actually quite a few stories that explore this theme. Since the little Oceanid is a water spirit, she immediately understands how the water is feeling. 
She then tells her lover about her true identity, as well as the truth behind the crisis. Her lover accepts her for who she is, and works with her to find a way to bring the water back. However, unbeknownst to them, there were some people eavesdropping when she revealed her secret. The little Oceanid is accused of being directly responsible for driving the water away, and faces the greatest dilemma of her life. And then? In the end, she makes the brave decision to sacrifice herself to save her lover, and the rest of humanity. Huh? But didn't they all treat Cleo like a villain? Why would she want to save them after that? Well, she mainly wanted to save her lover, plus everyone who'd stood up for her. Through her love for her human partner, she was able to find an even greater love. One that extended to all of humanity. Surely the biggest strength of Cleo's character. There's actually something else that bothers me. You know the protagonist is supposed to represent the director, right? And she never had the chance to become a hero in our world. If we're serious about dedicating this show to her memory, we should make the ending as true to life as possible. <sighs> what about if... The little Oceanid is hounded to death by people who hate her, her lover makes sure her secret never gets out, and humanity continues down the path to extinction. That sounds like too cool of an ending to me. And perhaps a little irresponsible to present to the audience. Yeah. <laughs> that ending would be a perfect mirror to director Aureli's death, both arbitrary and meaningless. Well, yeah, but it's all like in the audience kind of viewpoint. <laughs> On the day when she went missing, Director O'Reilly had instructed us all, somewhat out of the blue, to leave the Court of Fontaine and wait for her outside the city. We waited and waited at the rendezvous point, but she never came. By the time we returned to the city, she disappeared without a trace. We looked for her. The Gardamex looked for her, but she was nowhere to be found. Increasingly, all the signs seemed to point to her being the latest victim in the serial disappearances case. The director was the kindest soul in the world, yet she was senselessly sacrificed for the sake of a so-called experiment by someone who had nothing to do with her at all. Hmm. But doesn't the way she suddenly told you to leave the city suggest that maybe she had some sense of what was about to happen? It almost seems as if she was moving you to safety. I've been trying to follow up on that ever since, but all my efforts so far have turned up nothing. Vilmal might know something, but he won't open up to me. Vilmal? The one who's playing the role of the villain? Yeah. He's been overwhelmed by grief. I think the director's death hit him hardest of all. Grief? <laughs> Guilt, more like. Also... I have a hard time imagining that anyone took it harder than me, because, well, speaking of the play being true to life, I, I was deeply, madly in love with O'Reilly. What? You, you kept that one quiet. It's time to be upfront with you all. No more keeping secrets from each other. We'll never be able to agree on the ending if we can't be honest about how we feel. I did tell her how I felt once, but she turned me down pretty much straight away. Thanks, bro. She said that we were all like brothers and sisters to her, and she never considered us as potential romantic partners. Oof. Not that it came as a shock or anything. It was what I was expecting to hear. So I told her I'd always be there for the troop, and I'd always be there for her. I said... Maybe one day in the future, when everyone's settled into their own lives and on the up and up, and managing the troop no longer required her constant attention, well, maybe then she could reconsider what she really wanted in her life. And now, that day will never come. Ah, oh, Paulo. So if I'm the one writing this ending, then I'm gonna make sure it does right by O'Reilly. I won't let anyone get in the way of that. <sighs> In that case, you have to straighten things out with Vilmont once and for all, face to face. We've all had our differences of opinion over the ending, 
but those two have never seen eye to eye on anything. One of them has to compromise if we're ever going to reach a final decision. Well, if that's where we're at, looks like it's time to go visit Vilmo. Are you ready to face the truth? Honestly, I'm slightly terrified. But for the sake of our final performance, I'll do whatever it takes. Funny you should ask, though. You really do get what I'm going through right now. I mean, yeah, she spent through the same ship for 500 years. I certainly do. Come on, everyone. Allo Z. Allo Z. I don't even know what that means. Allo Z. Allo Z. Allo Z. What does. Oh, it's not that much. Hello, hello, see? Oh, oh. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I, I bet it's French or something. Hello. Oh, oh, this is tough going. Uh, Delphi, are you sure you can make?